Welcome to another parent teacher video lesson from the earlygiftedmanual.com, a free website for homeschooled children three to seven years old and their parents that promotes and develops giftedness at an early age. I am Gary Blank, the creator of that site and your host and facilitator for this video and all of the videos in my educational program. As the video lessons are designed to work in conjunction with the program on my website, I ask you to, at some point, click on the URL link in the description box below, and this action will take you to the earlygiftedmanual.com. By doing that, you will be able to put this lesson and all of the video lessons here on my channel in the proper context of the total program that I am presenting to you and your child. Welcome everyone to lesson 42, a video lesson on telling time. And uh, in this lesson we will be working on, uh, I will show you some ways in which you can teach uh, time telling and also just time concepts in general to your child. And here's what we'll need for this lesson. Uh, starting out, uh, we'll be using a digital clock. We'll talk about that uh, shortly. Also, we'll be using what's called an analog clock, and we'll be doing that uh, uh, later in the lesson. And as you can see, obviously, quite a, quite a difference between those two, and we'll talk about the differences uh, when we look at this. So there's the analog clock. Uh, let's see, what else? Piece of uh, paper and a, a pencil, of course, uh, for, for this lesson. Um, a digital timer we're going to work we will work with that at the at the towards the end of the lesson and uh, and also if you have any other kinds of uh, time pieces uh, we will also look at some of those at the end of the lesson and if you have some you could show those to your child also so let's get started I think uh, one thing I want to say before I get started, and I haven't mentioned this yet, this, this lesson on telling time, it's really just a part of the entire lesson um, that I have on time telling and time concepts. So uh, to, uh, to see supplemental material, so to speak, you can go to this lesson, Lesson 42 on the Early Gifted Manual. And uh, since about Lesson 40, uh, I haven't really been mentioning any of those sources. It, uh, mostly because if you've been with me this long, you know that uh, you have to, you need to reference all of these video lessons to the lessons on the Early Gifted Manual. All right, I need to get that little bit of business out of the way. Now let's look at the digital clock. And this particular clock, uh, obviously it's very fancy. It's an atomic clock and uh, it gets a signal from Colorado to keep it accurate. Uh, this is the business end of the clock right up here, the one we're most concerned with. And this one is very nice because it has other things down here, the date, the day, phase of the moon, the temperature. So I really, this is my favorite uh, clock here. I love it. So uh, the first thing we, we need to do, uh, uh, the first thing you need to do working with your child is to teach him or her how to read this clock. So. The, fir um, the first thing you have to point out to them that there is this, they know what numbers are all about already, but you have to point out that there are these flashing dots here, and that's actually flashing the seconds, and we'll get to that shortly, but uh, that's called a colon, and it looks like this. It's just two dots. And whenever time is written out, uh, all we see those those two dots. So um, the first thing we want to look at is the hours. And you read the hours on the clock always on the left side of the colon this way. Uh, and on the other side of the colon are the minutes. So obviously that's very important to, uh, to point that out. And when you are exactly on the hour and uh, 10 minutes ago we were on the hour, it would have looked like this. And on the hour I mean 
exactly on the hour and four hours and no minutes and the word we use for that is o'clock so you can tell your child that whenever we're exactly on the hour meaning when these these minutes digits here are on zero zero that is called o'clock and the hours go up from one to 12 and that's one cycle and then the cycle repeats itself total of 24 hours in a day we'll get to that shortly and as you can see already time concepts very very challenging uh, for children especially uh, you know our, our system of keeping time with this uh, Two, two cycles through the numbers, but uh, we'll talk about that in a minute here. So once again, a time on the hour, if there are two zeros over here, we call that o'clock. And we're 11 minutes past four, and at four o'clock. So, um, and since, I, since I'm on that uh, uh, train of thought, if you wanted to read this time, you would say four, 11 so you read the hours first and then the minutes and you really don't have to add anything special to it uh, 4 11 reading it is as simple as that four hours 11 minutes so uh, minutes minutes uh, can go anywhere from we already talked about this that's no minutes, that's on the hour, the o'clock. And they can go all the way to 59. And of course, um, there are 60 minutes in an hour. The reason why you never make it to 60 is because when you go to 59 and when you hit 60, the cycle starts over again. So you never have a, uh, like a 460, you could have a 459. And once again, a very difficult uh, concept for a child to understand. So uh, let's see, let's try to uh, come up with some, some other times here. Um, I think I'm gonna make one up here. And you could have your child read that uh, and, and hopefully she would say 523 and she should know from, uh, from what you have already been telling her that that's five hours and 23 minutes. And it's simply, when you actually recite the time, it's just called 523. Well, sometimes um, we get in a situation where, and I'll show you what I mean. It might be, uh, let's see. It might be four minutes after seven and your child might think it looks like this, but of course we know it doesn't. And we go back to this concept of zero as a placeholder. So seven, four minutes after seven looks like this, seven, and she would say it, oh, four. Uh, that placeholder is important. And we've run into that a few times now in our studies here. So. Um, he or she shouldn't have too much trouble understanding this placeholder concept. And of course that goes up to 09 and then finally 710. So that also is a very important thing to point out to your child, this idea that uh, minutes up to nine needs that placeholder in there. Otherwise uh, you really can't read it. And it's, it's uh, when you say it, it's 7.04. That's the proper, proper way to say it. So let me get a new sheet of paper here. So what's the smallest number you could see uh, on hours? Well, that would be one. And what's the largest number you could see on hours? That would be... 12 and of course that's important information now how about the minutes this number over here on this side as uh, we already 
found out it can go from zero, zero, which means it's right on the hour, the o'clock, to, and once again we've mentioned this, to 59. And here, here's, this is just so tough for a kid to understand. <laughs> and I'll, I'll write it out here and don't expect them to get this right away. They will over time. Let's say it's 459. And as soon as the next minute turns over, it's 5 o'clock. And that's a tough one. But uh, over time, Trust me, uh, your child will get this. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, there's two 12-hour cycles, and timekeeping is, is cyclic. There's no way around it. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to talk about uh, to your child about what is a cycle, and what is this time cycle all about, and it has to do a lot with our planet in relation to the sun and things like that. And, and, you know, perhaps your child doesn't understand that yet, so you just have to leave it at that. But do make the point that time, uh, time keeping, I should say, uh, really is a, is a cycle, it's cyclic, it's a cycle. So there's another word uh, for their vocabulary. And also, as I mentioned earlier, um, there are 24 hours in a day and we'll talk about uh, you know days and months uh, a little later on in the lesson uh, and in the calendar lesson. But right now, uh, you can tell him or her that there are 24 hours in a day, and in each day there are two 12-hour cycles. And like I said, we'll uh, I will show you techniques to explain this to your child in a in a reasonably <laughs> understandable way here uh, shortly. And now let's have a look at the analog clock. And as you can see, obviously, it tells time in a very different way than the digital clock, although it gives the same information. And um, uh, as some people might say, uh, these clocks are on the way out, and they're, they're probably right, but there's still many of them around, especially in schools. Uh, so uh, it, it will be necessary for your child to uh, learn how to read an analog clock. And plus, a real, another nice thing about the analog clock is, is that it really does show you the relationship between uh, for example, hours and minutes and seconds. So it's really good uh, for that reason. So let's, uh, let's, I think let's start out here by just talking about uh, the different parts of the analog clock. Um, this whole thing here we call the face of the clock. And of course these here are the numbers. They go from one to 12. These up here, these lines, and as you can see there's some small numbers here. I'll talk about those in a while. I call these the ticks. I don't know if that's the, the proper uh, terminology for these, but that's what I call them, the ticks. And then we have the, the hands. These three uh, things, for lack of a better word, I, uh, we are called the hands. And let's wait for this to pass here, so because uh, the clock is running. This shorter hand is called the hour hand, and as you can see, it points directly to the hours, and that's what these numbers are, the hours in the day. So you can show that to your child, say that to your child. The longer hand, the minute hand, goes all the way past the numbers and goes and points to these ticks. And that's how you can tell the difference. Uh, if your child can't remember between the two, it, it should be obvious by, by the fact that this is going past the number to the ticks. This is going just up to the number. Hour hand, minute hand, and second hand, which we can obviously see moving. And with the second hand, of course, you can tell your child that uh, this second hand makes one complete revolution of this circle in one minute. So um, one minute equals 
60 seconds, and we'll get into that very shortly here, uh, what, what that's all about. There are 60 of those minutes in an hour, and um, like I said, uh, just shortly, we will, we will talk about that. Another important thing to point out to your child is um, the directionality of the clock. And, and actually, uh, this has come into the nomenclature now. Uh, the clock, all the hands on the clock travel clockwise. And by that, I mean like this. So you, with your finger, you can show your child that it's going around. All three are going around in this direction. Um, even though they travel at different rates, and we'll get to that in just a second here. So that's very important. Clockwise, obviously you can see the, the second hand going this way. And, and of course there's a term called counterclockwise, but you should probably not talk about that right now because that will confuse uh, your child. So just stick with clockwise. So all the hands are traveling what they call clockwise this way this way and you can show her that and if things weren't complicated enough for this poor young child who's trying to learn how to tell time you can tell him that all three of these hands travel at different speeds and uh, that's that's just very difficult and it will take some time uh, for for your child to totally grasp that obviously the second hand goes very quickly you can see that uh, very obvious that's moving and if you can direct her attention to the the minute hand uh, she can see that moving it's not moving very fast but you can see it move little by little and the hour hand let's face it you really can't see the hour hand moving per se it moves so slow that it's very hard to detect but obviously uh, it gets around the, the clock so uh, second hand, very obvious, fastest. Minute hand travels the next fastest. Hour hand travels the slowest. And as we get to the next section here of studying the clock, uh, uh, I will show you a way to, sh uh, to show your child how that all makes uh, a fair amount of sense.